In 2005, Hurricane Katrina devastated the city of New Orleans, destroying over a million buildings. In 2008, a gigantic earthquake measuring 8.0 on the Richter scale struck Sichuan in China, leaving close to 5 million people homeless. But had the structures in either location been built differently, much of the damage might have been prevented, Jim Carter reports. According to a United Nations report, the number of severe natural disasters has been steadily increasing, along with the number of people affected by them. Growing urbanization worldwide has brought with it an urgent demand for quickly built, affordable housing, and building standards have suffered as a result. But poor construction is only one of the reasons that so many homes are lost in such disasters. Apparently, the square or rectangular shape of most buildings is far from ideal in areas prone to earthquakes, hurricanes, or tornadoes. Here to tell us why is architect Francis Newberry. The square and the rectangle are in no way as stable as the dome in terms of construction. In fact, if more structures in earthquake zones were dome-shaped, billions of dollars could be saved, not to mention countless lives. And this has been borne out by numerous examples over time. For centuries, indigenous peoples in Mongolia have lived in yurts, dome-shaped structures which can withstand the earthquakes, severe blizzards, and dust storms of Central Asia. Perhaps a more familiar example is the Pantheon in Rome, which was built around 126 AD in one of the most seismically active regions of Europe. It has proved remarkably resilient during the earthquakes and tremors that have rocked the region for centuries, making it the best preserved building from ancient Rome. Yet, despite such examples, it was only in the second half of the 20th century that dome-shaped homes, schools, and even churches began to appear sporadically in America, especially in the infamous Tornado Alley area of the central United States, where more and more inhabitants are switching to dome architecture for increased security. You mentioned that a dome can withstand extreme weather conditions and even earthquakes. But what is it about this particular shape that makes it inherently stable? Well, one factor that makes it especially stable compared to a conventional building is that any pressure, such as ground movement from an earthquake, is absorbed equally by all points of the structure. Another factor is the physical geometry of a building, which determines how resistant it is to high winds. Picture a dome. It has a perfectly curved surface, so wind flows smoothly around it rather than getting caught on angled walls and corners as it does on a square building, for example. Consequently, domes have been built to house and protect radar towers in Antarctica, where winds can reach speeds of over 185 miles an hour. And the same things that make a dome safe also make it cost-effective in terms of building. A sphere has less surface area than a rectangle, which reduces material and construction costs considerably. Furthermore, all that freely circulating air in the open space interior makes heating and cooling an easier proposition, requiring less fuel. Thus, domes are more economical and better for the environment, too. So it's virtually indestructible, cost-effective, and eco-friendly. With benefits like these, it's surprising that the dome is still not the prototypical housing structure, especially in areas of extreme weather. But as energy costs soar and natural disasters begin to occur with greater frequency, the dome home may yet become a familiar sight. Number 1. What has contributed to the large numbers of homeless people following natural disasters? Number two, why does Francis Newberry mention structures called yurts? Number three, where are domes being built to protect local residents?
Number four, what is one reason for the dome's stability? Number five, what could cause an increase in the construction of domes? Number one, what has contributed to the large numbers of homeless people following natural disasters? Growing urbanization worldwide has brought with it an urgent demand for quickly built, affordable housing, and building standards have suffered as a result. But poor construction is only one of the reasons that so many homes are lost in such disasters. Number two. Why does Francis Newberry mention structures called yurts? For centuries, indigenous peoples in Mongolia have lived in yurts, dome-shaped structures which can withstand the earthquakes, severe blizzards, and dust storms of Central Asia. Number three, where are domes being built to protect local residents? Yet, despite such examples, it was only in the second half of the 20th century that dome-shaped homes, schools, and even churches began to appear sporadically in America, especially in the infamous Tornado Alley area of the central United States, where more and more inhabitants are switching to dome architecture for increased security. Number four, what is one reason for the dome's stability? Well, one factor that makes it especially stable compared to a conventional building is that any pressure, such as ground movement from an earthquake, is absorbed equally by all points of the structure. And the same things that make a dome safe number five, also make it cost-effective in terms of building. In the a sphere has of less domes. surface area than a rectangle, which reduces material and construction costs considerably.